If you're in the market for a Nikon Z9 or you just recently got one and you're looking for the best settings for sports, well today I think I've got some good tips and tricks to set your camera up to get great sports photos. Let's go. Hello everybody, my name is Jack Beasley and I am a freelance sports photographer in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Today I'm going to take you through all the primary uh, menu and shooting banks within the Z9, show you what settings I like to use and I'll explain why I like to use those particular settings. Now, if the Z9 is your first foray into sports photography, I actually recommend you watch this video first. Um, it uses a camera that's a little different than the Z9, but that's okay. It goes into more basics of setting up your camera for sports photography. In this video, I'm assuming you have some background already in sports photography and you're just making the transition to Z9. Now, I'm going to go into a pretty thorough breakdown of the menu system within the Z9. However, stick with me to the end uh, and I'll show you where you can get an Excel file with all these settings and then you can modify it to your own preferences. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is something called menu banks. Menu banks are found on the more professional Nikon cameras, and I'm talking things like the D850, the D5, D6, now the Z9. Now, some of the other Nikon mirrorless cameras had what they called user settings, and it'd be like a U1, U2, U3, which was on the uh, one of the controls on top of the camera. For example, in the Z6, Z62, Z7, Z72, those kind of cameras. Now, these menu banks are actually quite useful. Uh, there's one called the custom settings bank, and there's one called the shooting menu bank and there's four groups in each one a b c d and you can mix and match you put one with the other or you could do you have different settings for all four banks and then you can mix them you have a very large number of combinations there. the first one i want to talk about is the shooting menu bank and this one because of the type of photography i do i have it broken down into four groups day sports night sports, portraits, and what I call standard video. So you know I do video, so I set it up specifically for that. In the custom settings bank, I have four of those. At this time, I'm only using two of those, one for solo sports, one for team sports. And I'll explain why I set it up that particular way, which works best for me. Now for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to set up uh, my first one, which is the day sports. The reason I have one that says day sports and one that says night sports is basically light levels. Uh, one, I want to take, make sure I'm taking care of sunlight situations, very bright, uh, very tend to have much higher shutter speeds, that kind of thing. Night sports by comparison, uh, now I'm dealing with higher ISOs and I'm gonna have different setup for my camera for night sports. Same thing with that solo and the team sports. One, we'll say it's a day sport with tennis, I got a single individual I'm tracking. I'm gonna set up my camera, especially the autofocus, for that kind of situation. Team sports a little different. Again, I might wanna have a different autofocus setting specifically for group sports where I have multiple potential subjects and I might have to jump from one to the next. I wanna set up, especially my autofocus, specifically for that reason. So let's get into the, the settings for day sports and uh, I'll show you what how I like to do. Okay, so right now I'm in A. I could have gone down here and changed it to the, any of the other ones, but I'm just gonna start off with A. Extended menu banks. Oh, and here's a nice little thing. If you can actually look, hit the uh, question mark on the top of the screen, and it'll give you some uh, explanations as to why you might have a particular different setting. Because I want to use the cap, just because I want to use the camera for its full potential, I have extended menu, uh, menu banks set on it. Now, storage folder, um, th I think this was the default. Uh, I will tell you, I changed the file naming to JB9 off of the, I think it was DSC was the default. I like to label all of my files JB, and then I use the number of the camera. For example, my Z6 is JB6, this is the JB9 and the Z9. Uh, when I'm using my D5, I have it as the JB5, so Jack Beasley 5. Role played by card and slot two. So these are the options you have right here. I like to shoot RAW plus JPEG. You know, I could have just done it as an overflow. I could have done it as backup, and I've done that before too, depending on the situation. Uh, but I like RAW and JPEG. 
JPEG smarter than the raw file, so they take up less space, which is good. And I like to separate them at the end. Uh, this makes it easier when one card is going to my raw folder and another going to JPEG. And the other reason I do that is uh, sometimes JPEGs work just fine. This is my basic setup, but sometimes I'll use the backup or overflow. But either way, but that's how I've got it set up right now. Image area, I've got it set for FX because I want full frame. Not all the time, but most of the time I use full frame, especially at night sports. Also, I use the DX crop alert, which just basically tells you, hey, hey guy, you're in crop mode, if I put it in DX. Image quality, I've got it raw, JPEG, fine star. JPEG fine star is the highest quality JPEG, so that's what I like to use. Image size, uh, large, medium, small. This refers to the raw files. Again, why not use the highest quality possible? You know, I, I might consider using a lower resolution, but in most cases, I have no problem you know, with card management. Raw recording. So you have options of lossless compression, high efficiency star, and high efficiency. This is what I found. The high efficiency star works great. Looks basically the same as the lossless compression. Um, however, I have several pieces of software that don't like it, uh, that have not modified by their manufacturers to use it. For example, Topaz, I like to use in Topaz, and I like to bulk process in Topaz. Uh, instead of bringing over from Lightroom. Well, Topaz doesn't like high efficiency star. So unless I am really crunched to, for card space, I will just leave it at lossless compression. Uh, again, unless I have a, a card issue, but lossless compression is the standard NEF file and it works great. I have no issues anywhere around. ISO sensitivity settings. This is for set for daylight. The lowest level is 64. You know, you should always use uh, the lowest base value uh, for your camera. In some cases, that's 100, but Z9 is 64. I set it on that. Auto ISO sensitivity control. I've got to set to on. That is like my, my standard auto ISO. However, you know, I've been known to leave it at a particular ISO setting, but the auto ISO works pretty darn good. So I just usually look, just put it on there and leave it there. Maximum uh, sensitivity, 3200, ISO 3200. Daylight, I almost never hit that level. I guess I could have let it go to infinity or 12,800 or whatever, but in this case, I just leave it at 3200. That's, it's not a, a make or break. Maximum sensitivity with flash, I don't need it overly sensitive, so I kind of moderate that a little bit. You know, this is daylight, I'm not too worried about it hitting super high or super low shutter speeds so I just leave it on auto. Uh, white balance I have it set for direct sunlight because that's what you normally have during um, daylight however if I'm in a situation I might go back into this during the event and change that to maybe natural light auto if I'm getting a situation where I'm going back and forth between shaded area and brightly lit areas but in general direct sunlight works pretty darn good, I just leave it alone. Set picture control, I put it on standard. I don't use auto because I never know where it's gonna go. Neutral is another option. Uh, so, now remember, these are just for JPEGs. This doesn't affect raw files at all. But I found standard works fine. Some people argue for neutral. I can see why, because it gives a wider latitude for the editing, but in general, the standard works fine. So here's an interesting thing. In neutral, you'll see it's neutral with a little star next to it. I have been told, that even if you're shooting raw and you set your picture control to neutral with extra sharpening, the camera functions quicker or the out of focus moves quicker. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm gonna set it that, I'm gonna try it out. It is not my standard procedure. However, I'm willing to give anything a try. And why it would work with raw files and not with JPEG, I don't know, but nevertheless, that's what I'm being told. As far as color space, I just set it to sRGB. Everybody I work with, as far as customers, ask for sRGB, so that's what I've got to set at. Active D-lighting, this only affects JPEG again, and D-lighting in Nikon is, it kind of raises, automatically raises up the shadows in JPEG files. It doesn't really affect raw files in any way. I just let it go for auto. It's not a major critical factor for me. Long exposure noise reduction, not really a factor here in uh, daylight photography, so I leave it off. Same thing with high ISO noise reduction, not really a factor during daylight photography, so I just leave it off. Vignette control, I put it on normal, that seems to work just fine. Diffraction compensation, auto distortion control, I turn those on. So for vignette control, diffraction compensation, 
auto distortion control, those are all related to imperfections in, in the lenses and it modifies, it modifies the camera settings to make up for those. Auto flicker reduction, it's daylight, it's not really an issue, so I leave it turned off. Metering, I like to use matrix metering. Uh, what I have found is that some people will, out there will tell you you should use spot metering. I don't believe that's true at all. What I found with spot metering is it tends to get thrown off by the colors of the uniforms. For example, if you have one team that's wearing white jerseys and another team that's wearing, say, black jerseys, so what's gonna happen is the spot meter is gonna be affected by the colors of those uniforms, right? So it gets, will get thrown off. The uh, very dark black uniforms will cause it to brighten up. If they're wearing the white uniform, it'll tend to bring those things down. So that's why I do not use uh, spot metering. Autofocus mode, my standard is AFC. You could put it on other things, but the standard for me is that. AF area mode, I've got it on wide, small. That's my starting point. However, during a game or a match, I might change it up, but that's my starting point. Autofocus detention, op detection options, auto, people, animal, vehicle, or subject detection off. I'm shooting people when it comes to sports, so I leave it on people. Auto bracketing, not really an issue for sports, at least that I normally do. Multiple exposure off, HDR overlay off, interval timer off, time lapse, video off. None of those really affect sports photography. All right, let's go down to custom settings. We're gonna go to A, which is solo sports for me and I'll go down the line here. All right, when we get into the custom settings, this isn't for solo sports, so these are sports where you have a single individual, say tennis, for example. Autofocus continuous priority selection, I go with release. That's what Nikon recommends, and I have found that works just fine. AFS priority selection, uh, I don't tend to use a lot of AFS, um, but if I were to use it, I would put it into just straight focus. Focus tracking with lock on. So. Uh, based on what Nikon has publicized as far as for sports shooting, they said it, uh, they recommend block shot if response as a three, subject motion steady. Focus points used, all points. Why all points versus alternating points? So there's an argument and someone will say that this is the better way to go is if you use alternating points, uh, if you move, tend to move your, your, your focusing point around, it'll skip over a lot quicker than if you're using all of them. Maybe that's true. I haven't really had to see that as a problem, so I use all points. Okay, next we're at uh, A5, store points by orientation. This one I think is really important. In fact, if I were to change nothing, well, most things in the menu system, this one I would definitely change. Basically, the way it's got, it sets up is with the focus point and the AF area mode, no matter which orientation you place it, uh, vertical, horizontal, you can set where you want that focus point and where you want that area of AF area mode. For example, uh, in a horizontal landscape mode, I like it center and a little bit up to catch chests, faces, stuff like that. Same thing with a vertical mode. I like to move these, the uh, focus point up a little bit, again, to try to catch faces in, my, in the camera. So that's why I really like it. Uh, Keep it in focus point, AF area mode. It keeps both those things, focus point and the AF area mode. So that's why I like to do it. AF activation, I prefer AF on only. I don't like to use the shutter. Um, I've seen people use a technique where they will use uh, one uh, focusing mode using the, the shutter button and then switch over using the AF on button for a different sh uh, focusing mode if, if they want to switch quickly. I am not, that's a physical way to quit, honestly. I'm so used to using AF on, uh, so that's what I do. Focus point persistence. This one I turn off instead of auto. Uh, the reason being is what happens is if you put it in auto, the camera will automatically want to keep that same location wherever the focus point was before, no matter it, when the next time you try to take a photo. That may not be where you want it. Just like I said for uh, back at AF point, sore points by orientation, is I want it to be exactly where I expect it to be, not in the last location it was when I stopped shooting last time. So that's why I put it auto. Limit AF area mode selection. Okay, and this one, you could actually say which area AF mode you wanna use or not use. I've checked the ones that I like to use and I've unchecked the ones I don't wanna use. So in my case, you have to have one in there no matter what, and they've designated that as single point autofocus. I don't see a big difference between that and pinpoint, so I've turned off uh, pinpoint. Uh, I like dynamic area autofocus small. 
not the bigger ones. Same thing with the wide area autofocus. I like the small. I don't really like C1, C2, and I like 3D tracking. And I don't like auto area autofocus. So if I limit them, as I go through my screen, I don't have to go through all of them to find the ones I like or might want to use. It'll just show the ones that I just designated. Focus point, wrap around, I've got it turned off. Basically what that means is if, say you're moving your focus point around, you could go off the screen and it'll pop up on the other side of the screen. I never have used that in any of my other cameras. I just prefer moving it back. So that's just me, but you might want to turn that on. Focus point display. Yes, I want to see all of them. Manual focus, dynamic area, AFC in focus display. And there's, there's a demonstration about why. Built-in autofocus illuminator. Uh, I've got it turned off. I don't need the little light in the front of the camera going off, trying to focus. It's not very strong anyway, and most of my subjects are so far away, I don't need it to come on. It's just a battery burner. So focus peaking, I've got that turned off. I don't use it. It's for manual focus and I never manual focus my camera, quite honestly. Focus point selection speed high, okay. ISO sensitivity, I like preferred in one third values. You can also do it in full step, I don't like that. EV steps for exposure control, you can do it one third, one half, one, one, full one. I prefer one third. Ease exposure compensation, you can just do that. If it's selected, only changes to exposure compensation made using easy exposure compensation would be reset when the camera is turned off or the standby timer expires. Matrix metering for face detection. So this one's interesting and I found it actually works pretty well. I've got matrix metering and in this mode, it'll actually look to see if there's faces in there and it will meter for those faces. I have seen this actually work. In fact, I was kind of shocked at how well it worked. So that's what I use. Center weighted area, I just use the standard. Not that I use center weighted very much. Fine tune optimal exposure. It's not something I normally use, so I don't really play with it, to be honest with you. Keep exposure when F changes. Yes, I got it set for ISO. Shutter release button auto exposure lock. Basically what this one does is while I've got, you know, I'm tracking a subject and then I start shooting, it'll keep the, the auto exposure in the same settings. So throughout all those frames, the exposure is exactly the same. Self timer, these I don't even touch. Oh, power off delay, you can set these to your own liking. I, I got it 10 seconds, one minute for menus, picture review, four seconds, standby timer, 30. But you, of course you can monitor those, find those. Continue shooting speeds, uh, I got it set for 20 and five on the low side. I think that works pretty well. Maximum shots per burst is infinity, although cards I have won't let me go all the way to infinity. <laughs> Limit release mode selection, you could, again, you can change your different modes as far as release modes. You can cut some of these out. I've left them in. Uh, as I say, I usually just use the, the 30 or the 20 and the 5, and that's what I got it for. C30, C120 options. These are a variety of uh, continuous frames. These only work at, with JPEGs. I don't generally shoot just JPEGs, so I haven't really played with it. I'll be honest with you, I haven't really played with it. Uh, I've seen some other examples out there, and I think they work great. Not something I normally use. So sync release mo mode options in sync. Synchronize the release of shutters on remote cameras with the shutter on the master camera. No sync to shutters on remote cameras are not released. So this is all about syncing multiple cameras that are linked to one another. Extended shutter speeds, I've got this turned on, and I'll hit the, the, the since the shutter speeds available in mode M, decreasing the minimum speed from 30 seconds to 900 seconds. Again, this is not something I use a lot in sports photography, but it's there. Limit selectable image area. I don't, use, I don't ever use one to one and 16 by nine. It's always either FX or DX. So I just, those are the ones I turn on because that's the only ones I ever use. File number sequence on, off or reset. So here's my philosophy on this one. So with file number sequence, I like to use on. And the reason being is because um, I may shoot an extended number of photos in a given day, and they may all just all go on the same card. And I want it to be able to uh, use every number available. Uh, and I don't want it to like reset and use the same numbers over again in that same card. So, so I don't mix and match. I'm not confusing one thing with the next. So I leave it on. View mode, photo live view. So in this mode, I like to have it on this mode because, which is, 
show effects of settings. So if I make a settings change, it actually shows up in the viewfinder of what that change was. Uh, I like to see that. Starlight view, I got it off. That's not what I'm doing here. Warm display colors, off. Um, again, I don't need that for what I'm doing right here. LCD illumination, I don't need that. Uh, basically, it would light up all the, the, the back buttons here. The problem with that is it burns more battery and I don't need it to burn more battery. D13, view all in continuous mode. I turn it on. That means even if we're firing rapidly, I, I still see it in the viewfinder. Release timing indicator, type B. This refers to when you take a photo, it, it indicates there's some wiggling lines either on the sides or tops and bottom to indicate a photo is being taken. That's important, especially if you have it in silent mode to actually indicate that a photo was actually taken. It's, there's no mechanical shutter, so it'll be completely silent and you wouldn't even know a photo was taken. It kind of threw me off when I first got the camera. I like it in type B where you've got lines all over the place. Type C is none. I'm sorry, on the left and right. Type A, the screen goes dark. I definitely don't want that. So I like type B. Grid type, um, three by three. I don't really use this very much. So I just leave it on three by three. Virtual horizon type, something else I don't normally use. There's two types. I leave it on A, don't really use it. Custom monitor shooting display. I want to have all those options. So I leave it on that one. Custom viewfinder shooting display. Again, I want all options available. Next up, this is kind of important. Flash sync speed one over 250th of a second uh, auto FP. What that is, is if you want to use high speed sync during the day, which is important because it's bright out, you want the camera to go high speed sync with the, the flashes that are capable of doing that. So you have to put it in these auto FPs, either 200 or 250th S. Flash shutter speed, 160th, which is the highest it goes. Exposure comp for flash, I say entire frame, just me. Auto ISO sensitivity control, uh, I say subject only because that's what I'm concerned about. Modeling flash off, you probably want to turn that off. Uh, auto bracketing mode, I just leave it as is. Bracketing order, I leave it as is. Flash burst priority. Precise flash control is my preference. And then we get to F1, which is customize the eye menu. I will tell you, I did customize it, but I don't do a lot with it. To be honest with you, everything I've got right there is pretty much a button that I've already got assigned someplace else. So I generally don't use iMenu, but some people do. So if it's important to you, then I would definitely set it up however you feel comfortable with. As far as custom controls with shooting and playback, I don't play with this a lot. I know some people who are very into it, and they, especially with the, uh, the function buttons. Um, I try to set up, let the camera basically do it the way it is. Uh, I've got so many buttons on this camera that it pretty much does everything I would, would have wanted changed anyway. The only th exception being the FN4 button. That one is, um, I set that for playback only because it's the same button that's on my D5 is up in that upper left hand corner. So that's why I change it. So but other than that, I don't really play with it because I just use the buttons that are already there. There are so many features built into this Nikon Z9, so many tools and different ways you can set it up for the type of photography you do. For example, if you're in astrophotography, which I'm not, there's features built into that specifically for astrophotography. So it's important to remember that you need to set up your camera the way you like to photograph, not necessarily the way I like to. Just think of what I did today as a starting point. And while you're here, check out this video right here. It's all about getting sharp photos for action and sports photography. I think you'll really like it. Until next time, I'll see you later.